Hey. Hello. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I see you dressed up for the occasion. I so uh, yeah, appreciate you, this. Very misleading invitation on your part. I thought we were supposed to go to the gym, get sweaty, and then rush home um, and do this. I hey, guys. Look at you. Good Lord. Well, I had to do some press. I had to yeah. do some press today. This is not yeah. the normal Sarah. This is spinoff Sarah is what this is. Ah, uh, spinoff. <laughs> uh, made a segue into the most asked question on wh Twitter. What are we doing? What are we, uh, how are we doing this? God, almost 60,000 people. Didn't we just start? Um, yeah, we did. <sighs> uh, we did just start. And it's like, do you see all the flags? People are tuning in from all over the world. It's so exciting. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So how should we proceed? Um... I do have, a, so I have, I have the, um, the hashtag open on Twitter, although, you know, I don't. You see who's like the captain see. of the ship. Sarah will steer it and she knows what we're doing I and I just show up. Okay. Pretty much how our relationship works. It's um, on, a, on an opposite Jessie, day. <laughs> usually Jesse calls me the dramaturg of uh -huh. our episodes. I keep track of everything and then <laughs> where he's at. Wait, so what's happening here? Do we, we love, we love each other. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, when was the last time we had a conversation? What were we fighting about? <laughs> quickly pull up that that uh, that clip. Sure, right, right away, Jesse. <laughs> I I th I feel like we did that the most though on Jabril the movie though. That was that was mm. the one because we were like the first one. Yeah, the first one. You got Jesse. Do we, we do we only refer to do we only refer to the first one as Jabril the movie? Would it, yes, or, it was or are Jabril they the movie and then Jabril the sequel. And then this was J-April the reunion. Have, have we, what have we landed on here? I don't know. A lot of people wanted J-April Endgame. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, that I also, seems appropriate. But, I, but we couldn't really say that before the episode aired. Right. So. There's a temptation to use something with the tri, like a tri trilogy, trident, triceratops, something trident, that... Trident, yeah. Trident, yeah. Tri trident, triceratops. With like, a, with like an Aquaman background. I'll work on the poster. I'll send you some specs. Good. Um, I, I, I would appreciate that. I think that'd be really good. I can't wait. Okay. To um, um, yeah, no, but when we were doing j the movie, we had to keep track of where we were because we had like multiple different yeah. images. I had to dye my hair like four different times. We had to find Me the too. scenes that we were shooting in between scenes that we had shot like six years right. prior. So many and flashbacks like, and flash forwards. Yeah, that was so fun. That was good. When, when Little did we know. Little did we know. Little the, did we uh, know it was part one of a three-part epic journey. <laughs> yeah, it's part one of a threesome. Is that not? That's probably not what? the right. We'll cut that. We'll. There's. You know what I mean. Should Three we times. circle back to that? Yeah, let's let's hang up and start over. All right. Do we have um? Yes, we have what questions. What should we okay. do? Questions. I, I, okay. I have questions on my iPad. Mm hmm Um, I took screenshots. It's probably not the most efficient way to do it, but whatever. Um, but I do want to start with questions about uh, literally, I mean, I, I answered questions in the press day today mm -hmm. about spinoff. A lot of people are feeling like this yeah. episode would lead to a spinoff and lots of questions about would you guys do a spinoff? What would it look like? Do you right. want it? Are they setting us up for it? Um, right. Might be a fun thing to talk about. Did they mention money at all or they, I, mean, they I know were... i was like uh, could you call business affairs <laughs> yeah have much... business affairs reach out and then we'll have cut, a conversation cut a check <laughs> which is which used to be sarah's old email address was cut a check at hotmail cut, cut, um, at hotmail. no it was yeah. at aol don't you remember right with the disc hmm. 20, 20, 20 hours of free service um okay so, I, so is that a question yeah the, the question is like do you what what do you see where do you see this story going? Like, right. if we could continue to tell this story, what would it look like? What do you think? Uh, I think it really lends itself. I mean, clearly it lends itself to, um, yeah, I mean, I get spin off or, or getting glimpses of it because what they're going, A, they're the best and they're interesting. Um, right, they're, they're not just, you know, they're the best because you remember them and you have nostalgia for them. Um, but one of the, I guess part of my answer is um, a reflection on why it works. And both of us letting the fans, letting you guys kind of understand, you know, it, it's, as, it's as 
nuanced and interesting and hard to pin down for us as it is for you sometimes. Like when Sarah and I came back, we hadn't worked together in years, hadn't been in the same space in years. And to be able to fall into a groove so easily because of a knowing and a trust and all those wonderful things that we share, it's, uh, yeah, when things just feel right and it makes sense. And it's really also nice to be able to do scenes where we get to have full conversations. You know, our show has a lot of people on it, a lot of stories to serve, a lot of characters to serve. So a lot of times it's, you know, it's quick and dirty. We get, we, we, we move the story forward and we go and then you watch other people. But for us to sit and really explore for these eight page, nine page, seven page scenes, a real knowing and a patience and understanding for each other. Um, you know, you guys respond to that. We respond to that. And so, yeah, we, it, we, you would think there's plenty more for that for us to do. So you love her. You guys are okay with me. We, we can watch the kid grow up. <laughs> going to going to Boston is like we're not just going to a place. We're not just oh let's go to the beach. We're, we're not just, I shouldn't say beach. Let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> no, 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 we're not going. To the the beach. headline going that to the, beach. the headline for this thing is like Jay Bro going to the beach. And they're at the beach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, is that you know I think is that like we're going to do something really fucking interesting. What Jackson's journey is really interesting. What April's already been doing off that we haven't really gotten to see, but we got a taste. And I feel like all, the fans really want to know more about what you've been doing. Um, all that's really rich, and there'd be a lot to do. Um, and and Boston would be an interesting an interesting place to do it. So I I get it. I shit. I want to watch that too. Um, I want to watch it too. I mean, one of the things that I was talking about um, in these interviews today is just that I feel like both now they're both kind of fully embracing their purpose like they're they're like a, a, a calling on their life to go into the world and make a change for the good yeah and like she has been in that space for the last few years like when she left the hospital three years ago she had this big massive moment of discovery this is what i want to do um and she's been living it and and this is the moment when jackson realizes I, I have this incredible opportunity to make real change in the world. And like, I just think about the two of them together coming from the places that they're, both of their hearts are, are, are pulling towards, towards serving the community and changing it for the better. And here you are with like head of the foundation with like resources to be able to actually do these things. Um, like how amazing I mean, to to really kind of dive into medical justice. Yeah, uh, I mean yeah. that would be we haven't seen that yet. No, and it's a really real thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. Just send. We'll set up a GoFundMe. Yeah. You Go guys just send us some money and <laughs> we'll do it. We'll act it we'll out ourselves. Shoot, we'll go shoot it. We'll go make a little uh, a little mini movie and then you guys can see what you think. I'm, e I'm eating now. You're, I, I really appreciate um, mm -hmm. how serious you are about being professional in this moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just As some. always, par for the course. Um, okay, I have a question from Kay, who says, what's your favorite J-April scene? You go. Okay. I have so many. Um, hmm. Man, I have so many. I, I I think probably one of my favorites was that like fifteen page scene we had in April the movie. It took all day mm -hmm. to shoot it. Ended with throwing um, fortune cookies at one another. Yeah. You got really sick off of Chinese food because you decided to eat ninety five dumplings on t the first take. Yeah, this was a, this is the uh, it's it's just called the um, Justin Chambers lesson. Yes. Which is to like don't. When shooting a scene, don't invest too early in committing to eating, as I'm doing now, eating things, because then you have to match it every single time. But and when you are really hungry, don't come to set hungry. You both show up hungry, always. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, dumplings, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> that impression does represent the intellect, intellect at play in those moments. Um, I want that in my belly. Yeah. Um, yes. Anyway, but I love that dumplings. scene. I loved that scene because we ne you never get 
epic scenes like that on television. You don't get a scene that lasts for an entire act of a show where you get to take, like have a very real, big, long conversation that takes many twists and turns. I remember you took a picture of all the marks on the floor. Oh yeah, 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 right. Just, we got to just play and it was so fun finding our way through the Japril kitchen living area, you know, moving through all of the different emotions. Um, and I also re remember shooting that scene like towards the end of the day after we've been shooting, cause we only shot that scene all day. Uh, towards the end, I, we were in like a big, we were in my coverage for a big heated fight moment. And I like lost the gas. I just was like, and I remember asking you, I'm like, why am I mad? Why, why am I right about this? Why, why, why am I convinced that like my argument is the right one? And yeah. you like put your hands on my shoulder. You're like, this is what, this is what it is. It's because of this, this, and this, and I've been a fucking asshole. And that's why like, you just, Oh wow! it was great. It was great because it was just one of those moments. Like we would do that for each other all the time though. You know, mm -hmm. like, what is this about? Can you help me? <laughs> and then, but the, the fact that you were literally playing an argument with me where you had to be convinced of your point of view in order but could to play. understand yours yes <laughs> but then helped me figure out mine so that i could do my and so it's so like almost meta for real life in like a real life situation a argument we've all had been in relationships and you're in arguments and you're in the living room and you're pacing around and you're doing some business and um and you lose the thread <laughs> and you lose the thread I remember being in an argument with a girlfriend and we laughed, we laughed about this like that night and, and ever since, but being in a real argument, but I had just gotten a new chair at the house. <laughs> no. And so I'm arguing, like we're arg bickering about something. And I'm, I think the chair swivels to rise and fall. Cause it's a little lower than I expected when I bought it online or whatever at the store. So I think that I'll spin it to raise it up so I can sit in it while we're talking. So I figured I'm just going to go, Spin, spin, and sit. But I'm spinning it. It's not going. It doesn't raise. I'm gr grossly misinformed. So I'm trying to have a very serious argument with somebody, but I'm just spinning and spinning <laughs> and going nowhere. And at a certain point, she's like, what are you doing? And I thought it would raise. Forget it. Like, I'm raising the chair, damn it. Right. <laughs> so to be able to, like, step out, step in, appreciate a moment of humor, but still, let's finish this. Yes. Wait, why, why am I even? Why oh, am I love you. Why am I even upset? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because there were also moments in that, like, we did not want our characters to get divorced. We were so sad about it. Oh, right, right. Yes. <laughs> we, we were so sad. Remember that divorce scene that we had to do where we just, like, sat there yeah. in our yeah. chairs and we're like, this is such a sad day. <laughs> and Having to perform things truly in, in a real way, but against your will, like, against yes. your wishes. Yes. It's a pretty so I, wild. I had to come up with a a reason to that this wasn't working <laughs> when I was like, but it can. <laughs> Looking to the writers like with pleading eyes. Do you want to change this? No. Don't you want this to be a romantic comedy? Can can it end that way, please? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So those good. are what? those are really good scenes. Let good. me what see. About your, what about your favorite scene? Um. God. There's so many, and I feel like some way, what, what keeps coming to me is like the short. Sometimes it's like the shorter moments that the characters have had in between. Like, yes, we have these big albatross scenes that are really epic and amazing. But I almost like the, like the, when we were first, when the characters were first finding each other and learning how to be, and it was kind of secret. There's even a scene that I think I posted when I took over IG yesterday of, I guess we had just, they had just slept together for the first time and Kepner comes out of, and she still had some tension, I think, with Karev oh, okay, yeah. before oh, I yeah, beat him no, up. Scene, I totally forgot right? about that scene. And then you come out and, and she's like, uh, you know, your mom keeps asking me why I'm tired. And you do this blush, like bashful thing and walk away. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and Meredith is giving me shit about it. Like those little, God, it just, they, they look so young. They feel, it says an innocence to it, right? Before the, before the pregnancy and the marriage and the, you know, some of the adult things that we come to understand. But that, in the, the innocent moments early on, um, trying to figure out and argue about 
I think you might be pregnant. I mean, remember, remember that scene? I pull you into a, a patient room and like, condoms don't break. <laughs> you know, like just like, you know, just kind of those like, like what? stupid young. Yeah, I, I had this like, what? What are you even saying right now? You're a medical professional. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like that early stuff when we didn't know, where we were confused. Mm -hmm. Both, even as actors, we didn't know what was going to happen. We, we, didn't, we didn't have an established foundation to return to. Yeah. We're just kind of figuring out how these two people from different walks of life and different belief systems are resisting the inclination to trust their gut mm -hmm. and like be comfortable with each other even though but on paper it doesn't make sense but i'm supposed to this and i owe this that i owe yeah. this to them and my mom and the church and whatever but we're just this magnetism um because as an actor like it's just something you can playing the truth of something is like a, just a real liberating experience yeah totally and i also really love that you know, from the beginning, we had no idea. We had no idea that we were going to wind up together. In fact, s some people have posted uh, an interview I did during my first season on the show, first season as a series regular, where they were like, who do you want to wind up with on the show? I'm like, well, I mean, there aren't that many options. I mean, my voice is so high pitched. I'm so young. I'm so stupid. I I'm, not, I'm not stupid. I'm just clueless. I don't know. Uh -huh. My hair is horrible. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, I mean, like, I, I don't really know because everybody's taken, but I mean, there's really only Jackson, but I can't imagine any, they're going to want to put the two newbies together. Like, that would be weird. Like, that was wow. what I said. In wow. the, yeah. And then I remember when they were, the writers were trying to figure out, like, who are we going to put April with? And it was like between you and Karev. Like, it was going to be one, mm. but we didn't know which one. Well, you first were like swooning over um, Derek, Derek, right? Which oh, just, yeah. Which put you in the doghouse. Yeah. 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 As, 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 as actors, as new actors on an established show, it's like you have to, you can think about what your character would want and you think about what the fans might react to because you want to be liked or do you want to you know have an impact so it's a little tricky it's so tricky oh my gosh those first couple seasons when everybody detested April Kepner that was, that was fun Kepner was a little was yeah a little much for everybody she was a lot she was a lot she was she was challenging but then but she had a really profound evolution so she was never boring she was um, never boring that's for sure okay new question okay um Oh, uh, well, here's one. It's just like a statement, but I like this. Missy says, not a question, but even though my ship herself would have loved to see a spicy scene, it was really admirable how much Jabril has grown into actually communicating. Look at our babies out here thriving. That's good. I, I actually really love that because I do think I had a lot of, a lot of people say, where's the kiss? We're so mm -hmm. mad that there was no kiss. Um, like, why would you do that to us? And I just feel like I feel like they've both grown and matured so much in the past. And, and this episode with all the different layers that it had, um, it made sense that it, that they wouldn't be impulsive in this moment. Like you've just made this giant ask of her. Yeah. Right. And, and, and spoken from your heart out of a place of vulnerability and passion and, and all of those things to, it, it feels like it would almost, it was too soon, I think, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, also, so much of the beginning of <clears throat> their relationship was impulsive. Yeah, exactly. We, we've, done, we've done the impulsive thing. We've done the just, like, like just kind of leap and figure it out and clean up the mess later or don't. Um, and it's, it's, it's the first time they've had that conversation. Who knows what happened? What happens on the second Friday they land in Boston and are, you know, put the kid I down, mean, you know? He food again, and he went and got her a bunch yeah, of Yeah, like, more dumplings, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, it was, it is, it is a, it is nice to be able to have a mature patient response and not lean to getting drunk and being impulsive and, you know, like that we, we, we've done that. We can do that. But yeah, yeah. I think that it was funny. Some people were like, you know, yeah. When are you going to just guys going to kiss already? When are you going to hook up? But that would, you're already projecting that in your head. Let us do something else. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that it like leaves something for the imagination. Mm -hmm. um oh this is a this is a nice one you might be nice but you might also not be nice in the response 
What did you miss the most about working together? Um. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to say something. <clears throat> Well, I lost my screen inter my scene interpreter who to tell me what is even what's happening. So I had to hire somebody, which was awkward. Um, uh, but you know what? Honestly, it was shit. The truth is, it was so it's twofold. My me, the person, and and for the character that I'm um, portraying, both definitely there was a gaping hole in being with somebody who really knows them who doesn't, it's not going to misinterpret them or they don't, they have a shorthand with it really knows them. And God, if what we all don't want in life is to be known, mm -hmm. is to be understood, which is to say, be understood, mm -hmm. to just be considered to be like, for you to be able to have access to pull. I remember not even just reading it, but when, when you were actually saying it, when we were doing the scene, when you call him on, you know, cause I really believe, that, you know, I'm embodying this belief that I should go do this. I fully, it's, I'm, I, I've got it. I'm solid. You can't knock me off of my position. And then you're like, yeah, but when have you ever cared about that? When have you ever wanted to do that? When have you, you literally been running from your family the whole time. And it's like, oh, fuck. all right. of that is true. Right. And not many people have such quick access to that. And not in a way that's trying to hurt me, not in a way that's no, like yeah. using it as an insult. You know, that there's, there's few things more, um, is I'm holding a mirror up. I'm like holding a mirror up. What? what but like a real mirror. A lot of a people play one. with that 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 <laughs> phrase. You know, a lot of people play with that. Uh, um, but no, a real one that is there for understanding, not for abuse. Like not. No. Yeah. That's, not no, to that's fucking I mean. hurt like, the other person. The 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 way that a mirror um, reflects the glory, and and the things that you might not want to say. You know, like it, it, it like the 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 she she knows she knows him so well, right? She, she knows him so well. And so she can speak into, I don't know if that tracks because look at the mm -hmm. whole history, but then she can also stand up and be like, you are an amazing surgeon. You are mm -hmm. changing the world. You are brilliant. Like she's affirming him and also challenging him at the same time. Like the way that I think a really good, beautiful mirror should work, you know? Right, right. You know, right. you see the beauty, but you also challenge you challenge and go like what are you doing right now can you take a look take a look at what you're doing yeah right yeah there's the you can't you can't buy that can't replace that and it takes a long time it takes not only a long time to develop that knowing between people um but also it takes hurdles it takes obstacles uh it takes conflict which suck in the moment but um develop understanding so the rest you know since April left, I would dare say you look back, it's a lot of just trying to understand himself and under, and be understood by others and failing and trying it over here and trying this relationship, which is all an uphill battle to be understood. And that's not working and try this. Okay, what if I don't try anything and just sleep with somebody? That's fun. It's nice, but it's not a deep under, like none of those things are understanding. So that's, that's what I um, say I missed and uh, made it so much more compelling to perform and come to work every day. Yeah. I, I mean, I echo all of that. I think I, I remember saying to you after we shot that first scene, like just looking at you and being like, oh, it's so easy. It's yeah. just so easy. Like I just, I missed it. You know, I missed that exchange, that the ease with which you and I, as Jesse and Sarah, the people and the actors are able to communicate so well and support one another. Uh, are you falling asleep right now? Is that no, 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 not at all. I'm adjusting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I, it, it, there is something that, you know, gets built when you spend nine years telling stories that have trauma in them and mm -hmm. real things that you have to go through and that you guys that we've played and that the audience has witnessed that we can pull from actual moments, not just backstory, but real moments that people have seen that we right. have lived, you know, right. um, it makes the... You, you don't get that. You just don't get, you don't get that kind of uh, communication uh, and story on, on most shows or films. You don't, you, you just don't have the time right. to get it. So yeah. So right. working with you was so fun, but then also the, the story was so rich. So that was like, 
delightful. Yeah, that's great. Um, were you surprised that Japril broke the internet again? There's still a trend in some countries. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Were you? I, I mean, yes, I'm. I am. I am surprised. I, I'm not like from zero to a hundred surprised, but I'm. Su we still got it, and the fans still connect to it, and that's really. It feels nice. Shit, I can you know admit that it feels really nice for people to. Yeah, we were talking about understanding before to people to really respond and under and feel like they know these people and their and and their gut was right. Their intuition was right. So right. I think there's a valid validation experience with the fans. Like mm -hmm. I fucking knew it. I knew that this was unfinished. I knew that you guys yeah. need to be in a room together. And so often for them, they're powerless and they just have to see what we do and. Um, and they can call bullshit on things they don't feel like it's connecting or that doesn't make sense or that doesn't track or that. And for them to, I, I saw it's, it feels good for them to be happy for something that is uh, meaningful and that I can understand as opposed to just something that's kind of frivolous. Yeah, I agree. I also like, I mean, after we posted that first little video and the behind the scenes thing and just like we were sitting on set after we posted oh, that yeah, and seeing yeah. the response. And we just kept looking at each other like, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, it was, so we it's had a, a, weird we time had a taste travel. of that before the episode aired, for sure. I, right. I didn't expect quite the, the earthquake of it all, but it, I mean, it was super fun. Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, so many callbacks in the episode. Fro Pillows, Jordan, Samuel. How did it feel to bring up so much of Jabril's history? Um, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about, like, it's there. No, it was there no matter what. Like, I, the right. character remembers it. Saying it out loud as a refresher. I get how that, that helps everybody to kind of come to the same space and oh, remember and clock all the ingredients that affect the dish. Um, but I already know it. So it didn't, I don't know that it, I don't know that it really impacted my experience, um, but I'm glad that it helped welcome more people into it. Yeah, I was, I, I think it also was like a lovely gift for the fans who have, you know, tracked. I, I talked to, one one of the interviewers today said that in preparation for this episode, she literally went through the entire series from the moment we came on and watched every Jabril scene, mm -hmm. like just to like refresh. That'd be um, interesting. That's a that's a level of research and preparation that I'm just unwilling to do. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's because I do it for you. Because <laughs> I'll just talk to ask you. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I was actually talking to a good friend of mine. Uh, today, who hadn't, he's never seen the show, um, and watched last night and watched some of the scenes from uh, J. Pearl one or two, and it was just interesting because he had a, he felt very much like he got a real under, he didn't feel left out as much. He's you know, yeah. obviously I haven't seen the show. I'm sure I'm missing, I'm missing things, but Jesus, the chemistry is very clear, and I get a very real understanding not only in the lines he said, but in, as in the dialogue, but in the non, in the space between the lines mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just the quiet reactions. Um, it was really, really, um, they were really transfixed by it, which says a lot. This is a, you know, you didn't, you missed 300 hours of a show, but you can, but you can drop in and just, just be whooshed into the, the depth of it. Yeah, I had a, a similar reaction to a couple of girlfriends who told me that they 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 aren't people who watch the show, but they watched it last night and they're like, it felt like its own story. I just mm. I am immediately invested in these two humans because like the depth was there and the chemistry was there, like all the things that you just said. Um, but they're like, I didn't need to, I didn't actually need to know all of those backstory things, you know. So is a a fan is going to cut together all the Japril scenes, all the scenes that affect Japril in one way or another. So those could be scenes that are just about you or just about Kepner or just about Avery also. Like we don't both have to be in all of them. And they'll edit them all together and weave them all together into an epic. I wonder how long that would be, what the runtime is. 
We've given um, you an assignment. So get to work. So Peru, introduce. Argentina, Brazil, South Africa. Please get on this immediately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, can we all just like mm -hmm. appreciate Jesse's brilliance in all of the stuff last night? I, I just That's not a question. Nobody I just need to say it because there are twenty six thousand people watching and just a big clap, just like a like a yay. Like a wow. Um there's one specific question right here about the stuff with your dad mm. that he um I mean I just that scene ugh, that scene with you and your dad's uh, you and your dad on the steps just absolutely destroyed me. It broke my heart. It was so beautiful. But this is the question from Kate. For Jesse, how did you approach Jackson's abandonment issues? What was going through your head when Eric Roberts said, not one day has passed that I haven't regretted leaving you. It haunts me in my sleep when I wake in the morning and I'm truly, truly sorry. Um, well, thank you. It is actually, even revisiting it, even thinking about it, even hearing you talk about it, watching it is actually quite emotional and difficult. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, I think that one thing that folks might not appreciate um, uh, or not, not understand, not appreciate, but that this shit is hard and it's really emotionally taxing. When I'm feeling, my character is feeling pain, I'm feeling pain. Mm -hmm. Like the body can't always tell the difference. Even I had to do ADR, which is when you go into the booth and have to click, ver verbally just redo a scene, redo a moment, redo a word because it was unclear. I'm also a very a mumbly speaker. So sometimes you have to come in and watch the scene and say, you know, triumph again. You got to say the word again because it wasn't clear. And having to do that for a part of that scene, it, it's, it's fairly devastating. Like the, it, it really was, um, I, I, I'm, you become, you know, I am the character and it, it, it hurts. And it's a lot of deep, deep pain and abandonment and confusion and uncertainty and just raging insecurity. Um, that is not a pleasant feeling. And it, you know, you metabolize that it's in your body. So, uh, you know, what, what you saw was real because um, I was experiencing it. Um, and what I found interesting in seeing it on screen was that it wasn't even that quote that that person asked about. I feel like if I remember correctly, it wasn't even the, the obvious line of hurt where the dad says, I whatever he said, I miss you. I, you know, I think about you every day. I don't think it was even that that made him, made Jackson explode into not being able to stifle these feelings and mm -hmm. desperately trying to shove them back in. It was something like him saying for the one time, the right thing, which yeah. was like, which was like, I don't, I didn't send the presents because I didn't have the right to, because I haven't earned that. And something that was actually kind of appropriate for the moment. Yeah for the first time ever in my whole life. Like Ugh. it almost, it hurts more than, oh, so you, you, you can think so and feel. So you're capable, you're not yeah. totally incapable, but you chose not to actually yeah. act on it your doesn't, ability. It doesn't, um, yeah, it, it, uh, you know, it's, you don't realize how much you're shoving it down and keeping, <clears throat> you know, the dam is holding it back. Until it just breaks, and when it's breaking, it's breaking, and I'll get grab it, grab it, and try to right. put it back in the box. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty brutal. And um, uh, you, but you, and you feel safe working with. He's a hell of, he's just an incredible actor and an incredible, incredibly sweet person, Eric Roberts. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was really difficult. Um, and uh, yeah. I don't remember what the question was, but that yeah, was, uh, that's that was, right. uh, I don't know, but you, you said good stuff. I mean, I echo, like, I mean, it, not about this, obviously not the scene, but like what you said about things living in your body, your body doesn't know the difference. I mean, I know I've told this story a bunch, but I, when we played that scene where I had to give birth to Samuel and he died in my arms, I went into yeah. premature labor, labor literally the next morning. And my daughter was born a month early and she was in the NICU for two weeks. Just to be clear, I don't know if people are really appreciating that. Sarah was literally pregnant, very pregnant, third term pregnant, while shooting our birth trauma scenes where her character is going to give birth to a uh, child who's in terrible danger and damage and going, not going to live very long at all and be in pain and discomfort. And we're going to have to meet and leave in almost the same moment. 
And she had experienced that while actually pregnant and it ostensibly induced a premature labor for her because her body couldn't tell the goddamn difference from that incredible stress and strain. Um, by the way, something that it just a, a new level of, you know, certainly something as a, as a man, I can't understand, but it was something that I feel like a few of our actresses have had to experience around ma maternal, you know, around, around mothering and being pregnant and juggling things when you're, body affects something else there's another mm -hmm. living being that is directly impacted by your blood pressure by your mm -hmm. spirit um that's a hell of a gift you've given to the audience for the sake of storytelling and it and it's we see that it's transformative for people yeah um thank you but yeah that was intense it was intense so you, you and that the like sorrow <laughs> i remember when our characters were going through a divorce and I'd come home and I'd be like really sad after a like particularly sad scene. And Peter would have to look at me and be like, we're still married. Yeah. Everything's okay. Your children are both alive. Yeah. And I am here. Oh, <laughs> like, poor God. Can you please yeah. put April away? Yeah. She's Which is so hard to do. Right it's really hard to do. Yeah. It's, it's like you need, you know, somehow, you know, on another level, you know, people sometimes need, you need therapy of some kind to like compartmentalize it or just process it out. Um, you gotta like take that drive home and undo it, put mm -hmm. on some music, like mm -hmm. take those deep breaths before you step back into your real life. Cause you mm -hmm. have like residual stuff in your body. It's just. Yeah. Um, by the way, someone just wrote, does anyone else with OCD really annoyed by Jesse's broken hat strap? <laughs> is it broken or is it just, I oh, it's, it's broken. Not wait, wait, me. wait, it's broken. Yeah. I yeah. didn't realize that. <laughs> now I'm definitely going to keep it. Screw you guys. Hold on I don't a second. Know Look who at asked this. that question, but thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> that made me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. My broken hat strap. Buy me a new one. Damn. Okay. <laughs> See the stress of playing this goddamn character. My forehead veins are bursting and it's breaking yeah, that's, my hat. That's it. It's your forehead that's veins. What it is. There's strong veins right there. Mm. Um. All right. Uh. Let's see. Um, what else? What else? We got a few more minutes here, guys. What else do I you want to know? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Sarah is beautiful. How was the bus episode? Somebody said. Um, oh, well, you acted your ass off when I, my hero in the fire. Yes. Moment. You know, I had, uh, I saw somebody on Twitter put me going like Jackson and like putting my head, hands to my head and then put it next to you when I'm getting my stomach cut open. Talk about Remember on when Harriet was born? Yeah. Born? Yeah. Yeah. There's an, a moment where you're like, ah! when you're on the phone, you're like, save her, save her. Oh, like, shit. Yes. Die. And yes. you do the same thing. And they've oh, no way. both of them together. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, I want to see that. I remember that. Oh, my yeah. God. That was crazy. I had panic attacks after that for, I blacked yeah. out like three times, slightly, but during that cutting open and On screaming, the table. Yeah. Screaming. With Ben. That was nuts. Um, uh, oh, okay. Sarah, what were the easiest and most challenging parts of saying hello to April again? And Jesse, in what ways has Jackson grown throughout the years to lead him to this decision to leave Seattle? And to what extent were you involved in developing the story? You go first. Um, easiest and most challenging parts of saying, well, the easiest was knowing that I was coming back to primarily just do an episode with Jesse. I just, I knew that that, I wanted to do that. I always, always wanted them to have more closure and some sort of, um, I wanted to be there for him in his, la in his last episode. Like that just made sense to me in every way. So it would have been very hard for me to say no to that. Um, and challenging, I mean, challenging, I mean, it's it, challenging just to step back into it after after three years of really kind of moving beyond and moving past and going on right. to other things. Um, after having, you know, it, it was hard for me to say goodbye to her three years ago. It was emotional and challenging for sure. So to kind of 
open myself up to feeling all those things again. Yeah. It, it, it was definitely, um, that part of it was challenging, but, but then it was immediately easy because I got to work with this joker. What was my question? Uh, in what ways has Jackson grown throughout the years to lead into this decision to leave Seattle? And to what extent were you involved in developing the story? Uh, well, he's grown in that he's... Um, it's one thing to... You gotta, you gotta know something exists before you can acknowledge it. So him kind of acknowledging that he is damaged. You know, as he said, it, he has been... His relationships have been impacted. He has been negatively impacted by this gaping wound around abandonment and how do you process that and then what is the source of that do i have the temerity to face it or go drive and go address it or go to mom and go ask her and demand a response you know all those things are really big steps we've all had you know conversations in our head with a uh, confrontational conversations with mm -hmm. our head with people that affect our lives that we've oh, never quite yes. You know, you never quite got it out, though. You never, you know, or you still haven't, but you should and you will. Or you that, won't because you're too afraid Or you won't. To. Or you won't. Absolutely. Yeah. The amount of God that, yeah, come on. So, so that's really relatable. Um, and yeah, I definitely had influence. We, we collaborated big time. By the way, shout out to the writers of the episode, Felicia Pride and Elizabeth Finch, known to us as so Finchy. Um, and of course, Krista Vernoff, our showrunner who, uh, you know, touches every season, you know, affects everything the light touches um in a beautiful way and this was so this was a lot this was a very emotional process a bittersweet process right there's satisfaction in it there is terrible fear in it there's anxiety and all those things um so it's really hard to you're excited but you're devastated you're sad but you're really happy you're really pleased to be able to articulate something new that you know a lot of people can relate to and just can't find the words for. Um, but it, like I said, it really was painful. This was a really emotionally painful experience for me. I do not, I, it was not um, emotionally fun or happy. Uh, intellectually, I was overjoyed to be able to work with you and be able to be there. We were, we were happy about that, but, uh, it took it takes a toll. Um, so yeah, so it was all those things. And um, luckily, we work in a place where the people all of this stuff starts, we don't have a show without the writers, we don't have anything without an idea on the page and somebody who knows how to communicate that. And luckily, they're so generous. And we're able to really collaborate and build together and disagree and enlighten each other. And I hadn't thought about it that way. Oh, that's true. I was, you know, maybe that was from ego that I was actually thinking I should do it this way. But the truth of it could be this. And so being able to really be patient with each other and learn, it was, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. And one of the many things I will forever cherish about the, the process um, and, and being responsive to the truth of that, like the only person that really knows that he can talk to is, uh, uh, needs to return um, that we've seen on camera. Like we can, we can you know, I think behind, off camera, Jackson has a, has a real understanding with Meredith as well. Um, but we've seen us really live it out. So mm -hmm. let's, let's go back to the source to really get the truth from both of them and some closure. And look, it, it worked. It's working. People feel seen and heard and validated and like they're, they can understand. It's a pretty big deal for a lot. Can't hear you. Oh, no, I can't hear you. Oh, it was because I got a call. I'm very popular. I get a lot of phone calls. And... Um, I haven't gotten but, a single but, call you know, during this. These, these, you know, the fans that we're all talking to right now, y'all are from, you know, 240 different territories around the world, hundreds <laughs> of different countries. You all have different cultural nuances and habits, and somehow what we're what we're creating uh, touches you all, in a, you know, in a certain way. So, so that's something that that we should be. I am proud of. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. I, um, I actually texted Krista last night just to say that I'm so pleased, y'all. I called Jesse actually last night, last night after watching it, bawling. <laughs> just so proud to have been a part of this. So proud to be your friend. Um, to see all of the 
the beautiful things that you have brought into this role and to get to walk out with you at, on your exit. It just, it was so sweet. So I, and, cool. and I, I texted Kristen. I was just like, I'm so glad I said yes. Thank you so much for bringing me back. This was so special. So, yeah. Um, well, I will also say just as we, come to close on this that like you know it feels you know like the end of an era end of things but we also have um it's hard to process it all right now you know yeah. like I, I admit that like i don't have all complete thoughts and understanding because it's all just happening in real time you know i think that in a week or whatever when we when we have the fair the jackson farewell episode which i think i anticipate will still be very tied to this relationship um maybe i'll come back on and share some fair, more farewell thoughts and have a little mo a moment to pull out, you know, and, and zoom out, I should say, and, and get a sense of time and space and, and how I feel. Um, so it's not, uh, my point is that we'll, we'll talk again, we'll talk again soon and keep processing this stuff together. Um, and, you know, on behalf of both of us, and we'll say this in other forms and fashions also, but uh, to y'all as fans, we, we, this doesn't happen without you. It just simply doesn't happen without you. You guys are directly involved in the magic that has been created and is created um, is is being created. So uh, we we think of you, we consider you, we we love and respect and are and are so grateful for you. Um, yes. There is, you know, it's not it's not us and then the fans. Like y'all are part of the sauce the whole time, mm -hmm. um, and your your passion makes a really uh, a really big difference. So so we we love that. We love you guys. All, All right, right, my friends. Until next time. Until next time. We did good. Yes. All Bye. Right. Bye.